From Hollywood, it's time now for... Johnny Dollar. Johnny. I was afraid you might be away for the weekend. Who's that? Byron Kane, Intercoastal Maritime and Life. Oh, hello, By. How are things in Boston? In Boston, fine. In Cod Harbor, terrible. Who says? Meg McCarthy, who runs an eating place there at the harbor. Murder, mayhem, arson, or what? Right now, it's or what. But if you don't do something, and fast, it may be all three... Can you come over and see me? Now, bye? I know it's Saturday afternoon, Johnny, but this needs fast action, will you? Bye. Goodbye. No, bye. Listen, you... Dollar, you're a sucker. Tonight, and every weekday night, Bob Bailey and the transcribed adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account, America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator... Yours truly... Johnny Dollar. <laughs> Expense account submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar, location Cod Harbor, Massachusetts. To the Intercoastal Maritime and Life Insurance Company. Following is an accounting of expenses incurred during my investigation of the Meg's Palace matter. Expense account item one, seven dollars and thirty cents. Cab from my apartment, train fare and incidentals to Boston. Byron Key was a good insurance broker, and I figured he wouldn't have called me over a weekend unless it was pretty important. To get right to the point, Johnny, insurance on the palace is only for fifteen thousand dollars. Wait a minute, By. What is this palace? A fishing boat? No, it's what Meg McCarthy calls a restaurant right down on the dock. Cod Harvey, you say? That's right. Well, what seems to be the trouble over there that couldn't wait till after the weekend? Well, like I told you, this character, Meg McCarthy, runs a so-called restaurant down on the docks, the Palace. I sold her 15000 insurance on it. And, Johnny, it's uh, quite a place. What do you mean by that? Uh, we also carry 25000 straight life insurance on Meg herself. Separate policy, of course. Which one are you worried about, by? Both, I think. Huh? Matter of fact, the more I think about it, the gladder I am that she didn't fall from my pitch when I tried to get her to increase the coverage on the cafe... If she had, our necks would really be out. Well, what's the matter? Isn't it worth 15000 now? Oh, sure, at least, even if it doesn't look it. You know, the stoves, equipment, and all that sort of stuff are in the coverage, too. Then I'm afraid I don't see what you... The thing is said. this, Johnny. Meg has been threatened. By whom? How? Who knows? Anyhow, she's notified me that there have been a couple of attempts to set fire to her place. Since she lives upstairs in it, that means danger to her own life, too. Uh -huh. And the whole 40000 is at stake. Yes. Will you go up there right away and see what you can do? Today? Tomorrow? Sunday? Look, maybe you can get in some fishing. I understand you're quite a fisherman. Oh, no. The last three times I was promised fishing while working on a case, all I did was cut bait. Proposition. If you don't get in at least a full day's fishing trip while you're up there, I'll double whatever you line up on your expense account. Uh, sounds mighty tempting. How about it, Johnny? Okay, bye. You asked for it. Item 2, 1195, transportation back to Hartford, then on to Cod Harbor the next morning. Fine way to spend a nice warm Sunday. Nice place, too, if you lost your sense of smell. There were two or three dozen fishing boats of all shapes and sizes tied up at the long dock and piers that comprised the important part of the village. For housing, there was a scattering of weather-beaten shacks, one store. Meg's Palace turned out to be the biggest, most disreputable-looking of the dockside eating places, and since there was a clothes sign in the front door, I went around to the back. Look here, Meg. I, I just come back to Paris. Uh -huh. uh -huh. Well, the next time that mangy, scurvy crew of the Lillian comes in here and gets drunk and brawls and carries on and busts up me fine glassware in China, to say nothing of a couple oh, of wooden Meg, chairs and a fine Listen thing. to me, darling. Don't now. you, darling, me, your pig face squint eyes. Oh, Meg, put down the frying pan, Oh, no, sir, not until you get your filthy hide out of here. I'm not in a respectable joint, and the likes of you and the ragtail crew of yours have got no place in it. But, uh, What's more, and furthermore, I won't have you around. But, hey, I, you. I only so come get. to pay for the damage my boys did last night. Now, look hey, here. Hey, that's a laugh. Pay for the loss of me dignity to say nothing of me Make trade. Make little buttercup, please. Now, get out of here, Willie. Get out. Well, okay. Hey, here's your, here's your money, Meg. Who wants your dirty, offensible money? Get! Meg, put down the frying pan! I'll put it down, Willie boy, if you don't get out of here. I'll Meg, 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 go! Get now before I lose the hand! Oh, Meg! Get out of here! 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 Get out of
Excuse me, Miss McCarthy. Oh, ain't he a darling? Ain't he the sweetest man you ever did see? Huh? The man you just threw out of here? Not only comes in to apologize, but brings the money to pay for the damage his prankin' boys done last night when they were celebrating the big catch they made. Lovely bunch of lads they are, too, every one of them. As loyal to Willie, but... Now, who the devil are you? And what's the big idea of barging in here on a Sunday when anybody with eyes in his stupid head can see that the place is closed oh, up? Oh, now, your eyes so blind in your head you couldn't see the sign out front? I saw it. And sneaking in here the back way this way. Who do you think you are? Well, I wasn't now, sneaking. Now, get out and leave a lady alone of a Sunday. Go on! Don't get tough with me, Meg McCarthy. Huh? Just put down that pot and shut up for a minute while I tell you why I'm here. Put it down. Shades of me, dear departed, overbearing husband, yes, sir. After all, I should have noticed you're a gent standing by the way you done while me and Bill was at its helter and skelter. Oh, but he is a dear one, ain't he? Yeah, well, at this point, I wouldn't know. But from what I saw a minute ago... Oh, don't let that fool you, dearie. We're in love, me and Willie boy. Ain't he a living doll? Meg. A fine, fine husband He's going to make me, too. That's why I made him the beneficiary of my life insurance policy. That's exactly what I want to talk to you about. Then go ahead and talk. What's stopping you standing there like a banty rooster that doesn't... Will you shut yet? up? Oh, well, of course I will, dearie. And I'm begging your humble pardon. But if there's anything I hate, it's a lily-livered man that has... Meg! Done... Yes, sir. I'm sorry. Then Listen. Yes, sir. My name is Dollar, Johnny Dollar. I'm an insurance investigator. Insurance investigator, eh? Well, in spite and despite of your pretty clothes and pleasing manner, I don't want any of already got. No, them. no, you don't understand, I Meg. got all I can have. I'm little. just... And from the looks of things, these past couple of... Will you of shut days... up a minute? Of course, dearie. I'm sorry. You call the insurance company, Mr. Byron Kay, an intercoastal oh, maritime. Oh, yes, dear little pasty-faced Byron boy. Why, do you know if he'd had half the guts and get of a he-man, he would have sold me twice the insurance he did? Well, that's not quite the way he told it to me. Well, it's the way I'm telling it to you. Oh, what am I going to do, darling, if they wreck my place the way they're trying? Oh, this Willie boy, as you call him, who was just in here? That's a feminine. What? He's Captain Billy Morgan. Bill, to you and any man what calls him oh, Willie. Oh, put it down, will you? And stop yapping your head off and answer my question. Yes, sir. Now, is Captain Bill Morgan one of the people you suspect of trying to wreck this ugly-looking hash house? Oh, I love you, boy. You talk like a real sweet, overbearing maid. Then answer my question. Well, of course he ain't. Willie boy wouldn't hurt me any more than I'd touch a hair of his pretty head if he had a hair on top of it. All right, then who? Johnny boy, there's a dozen of them like to see Meg's palace burned to the ground. Blast the black thieving soul. Why? Because I give them the best and the most food in the harbor. That's what the man gets here. So what happens to the silver plate in Ernie's manor house and Irving's chop suey joint? Well, I'm putting them out of business, that's what. So you think they're trying to put you out of business? Think huh? it, I know it. That's why I telephoned that sniveling, lop-eared Byron Kay to send somebody down here and make them stop it before he had to pay off a lot of insurance on it and maybe even on me. Why else do you think? There have been some attempts to set the place on fire, I understand. Why else do you think a lady like myself would take to sleeping on the bar down here every night, getting a creek and me sacred idly up? But I'm getting sick and fed up with it. Don't know that I blame you. Now, look, this will you... trying to keep awake all night every night to keep them from burning it out from under me and me, whether it is making a fair shadow of me for myself out of me, I'm losing me strength. But not your I aim. Have... Look, while we talk, I'll help you clear up some of this. Well, mess. the devil you will. It is not the man's job, especially since you ain't romantically inclined towards me. But you would let Bill Morgan clean up for you, huh? Well, he was the cause of it, wasn't he? So if he and his boys don't show up before nightfall and take care of it, so help me, I'll keel haul them every one. Besides, if he's going to be me old man when the fishing season's done, he's got to know how to keep in line. Now. Now. You say there are people you suspect are trying to fire this building. Three. All right, three. Now, who are they? The owners of the other restaurants here on the dock? Aye. First, there's Clem Harris, what runs the silver plate. Oh, and a sly one he is. Yeah, what do you mean? He's too soft and polite and soft-spoke. Me, I never trust a man unless he talks up like a man. Well, I guess that's why I like you, dear. Uh -huh. Well, who are the others? 
Ernie Turner at the Manor House Cafe. Oh, yeah. Is that the big place down at the other end? What? The little hole in the wall next to the bait stand. And half the time the customers don't know whether they're getting bad food or thawed out bait. And the third one. Yeah? Ah, it's that stubborn mule that runs Irving's chop suey joint. Irving who? What's his last name? Irving? His name's Tony. His name... Now, wait a minute, will you please? Sure. Tony Fortino, Italian. Then why is it called... Why a chop suey place? If anybody has eyes, he would have saw how the sign was changed. First, the Chinese had it with chop suey. Yeah? Then came Irving with kosher, so he added his name to it, and now it's Tony. Well, then why... Only there wasn't any more room left on the sign, so stop complaining. <sighs> okay, Meg, you win. But have you any specific reason to suspect any one of them? One of them? I suspect them all, the dirty conniving. Why? Because they're a dirty conniving... I'll tell you why. Because they won't sell out to me. Because oh. they all three keep open competing with me, and that's three against one, so they're a dirty all right, conniving... All right, all right, you but... said that. Well, aren't they? How would all you... All right. Uh, yes, sir. I, uh... I love it when you speak to me that way, Johnny Boy. So you said. Now, I asked you if you have any specific reason for suspecting any one or all of them. Well, of course I have, on account of the threats they sent How do you know they sent them? Because I suspect them, that's why. And what happens three times they try to set fire to my lock... Meg, Meg, you don't have one bit of actual evidence against any of them, do you? Well... Well, do you? No. But I suspect the dirty can I... Hold it, please. Are you sure those fires weren't accidental? Accidental. Well, with all the dirt and grease you leave around this In shack. the middle of the night with a stove fire banked like I've been doing it for 20 years and with all the fires starting outside where they have no business. Look, Johnny boy, I'll show you where they started outside. Well, now, that's a good idea because so far I confess I can't get very much alarmed over what's no, happened. No, who... Don't the whole town know I'm closed on Sundays? Hello, and what kind of a blubber-headed income poop would be calling Meg's pilot on a Sunday when everybody knows... I want Johnny Dollar. Huh? Oh, of course. The gentleman's right here. It's for you, Johnny boy. Oh? Hello, Johnny Dollar. We know why you're here, Dollar. Oh, yeah? Who's we? But you won't be here long, understand? Well, now, that's a matter of opinion, isn't it? Either you go quiet the way you came, or you go in a long wooden box. Get it? Now, what is it, Johnny boy? Come on, Meg. Let's get to work. Now, here's our star to tell you about tomorrow's episode of this week's story. Tomorrow, well, they say that darkness can cover a multitude of sins. It can also cover a strong man armed with a deadly weapon. Join us, won't you? Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar, starring Bob Bailey, is transcribed in Hollywood. It is produced and directed by Jack Johnstone, who also wrote tonight's story. Be sure to join us tomorrow night, same time and station, for the next exciting episode of Yours Truly, Johnny Dollar. Roy Rowan speaking. (laughs) 